Hey everyone, welcome to Daily Dose. I'm Chris Riley, and today we're gonna be talking specifically about fascicular blocks. So when we look at the heart conduction system, we start from the SA node, go to the AV node, and then down the bundle of Hiss to the right bundle branch, and then the left bundle branch. In the left bundle, we have a left anterior fascicle and a left posterior fascicle. A left anterior fascicular block is when we knock out that anterior fascicle from some sort of ischemic event. And same thing with that posterior fascicle. So we're used to bundle branch blocks being seen on our ECGs as widening of that QRS, but with fascicular blocks, that's not the case. Now, when we diagnose these fascicular blocks, I want you to keep these five leads in mind on your ECG. One in AVL and two, three in AVF. So to diagnose a left anterior fascicular block, there's a few different things we have to look out for in these leads. Leads 1 and AVL are going to be the same. So with this, we're going to see first a small negative deflection in our Q wave and a large positive deflection in our R wave. That's going to be 1 in AVL. And then in our inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF, we're going to see a small positive deflection in our R wave and a large negative deflection in our S wave. And that should be in all of the inferior leads. That is diagnostic of a left anterior fascicular block, which is way more common than its counterpart, the left posterior fascicular block. And I remember this one as the opposite. So in leads one and AVL, we have a small positive deflection in our R wave and a large negative deflection in our S wave. And then in our inferior leads, we have a small negative deflection in our Q wave and a large positive deflection in our R waves. So I think of them as the opposite. And we're thinking about these grouped in the one in AVL or the lateral leads and the two, three AVF or the inferior leads. Now, if you have a left posterior fascicular block or a left anterior fascicular block with a right bundle branch block, so remember a prolonged QRS and that RSR prime in V1, V2, or V3, as well as that slurred S wave in one or V6, then we can diagnose this as bifascicular block. And that means their right bundle branch block is now out, and one of the fascicles of their left bundle branch are out. So they're about one infarct away from going into complete heart block. So these are really important to find on our ECGs and note because these patients have ischemic cardiac disease at baseline. <laughs>